Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another large block non-combat ship, and this one is called the Hyperdriver, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a large block non-combat ship that features a fairly large interior and plenty of cargo space for you to store everything you need on your journey. And from the way it's been designed, it looks like it should be blasting around the racetrack, but unfortunately, I couldn't find a racetrack good enough or big enough for this ship. Anyway, pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Hyperdriver is 849 large blocks using the Decorative Block Number 2 and Sparks of the Future DLC packs. And I swear I just saw lightning in the background. So we're just going to close off this, get rid of the weather once again. I swear this keeps turning on by itself. And there we go. We'll move all the way around towards the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside. Have a quick tour of the interior, then we'll fly it around to see what it can do before the weather eventually comes back. All the way over here at the very front, this is what we get. So front and center, what we can see is an ore detector, so we can go around space, we can go around on a planet to find precious resources, mark the location, and perhaps send it back to base so they know where to go. Just behind that, we've got a lovely glass bridge where we can see a few seats for your passengers to sit on, but just in front of that, we've got a bunch of catwalks because these are covering up the size of our conveyors, which are being used for our side hydrogen thrusters. If we were just to pull away and look at it like so, we've got some lovely white seal blocks come towards the front, with a few orange just to break up the colour. If you were to come all the way around onto the side, what we're going to see is the hydrogen thrusters I talked about just a second ago, with the catwalks right behind them. So there they are, like that. Put my light on for the moment. If we were to turn around over to here, we see the start of a few black blocks. Then we've got a window block just for a bit of decoration. If we were to look at it on the side, we'll see a bunch of hydrogen thrusters because this is our main form of thrust on the ship. Over to here, we see a couple more hydrogen thrusters. There's a hydrogen tank with some O2H2 generators going all the way along to our side thruster pod, which features two large hydrogen thrusters. If we were to look at it like so, that's what it looks like from the front. Then if we were to look at it on the side, we'll see another hydrogen thruster, some great use for letter blocks spelling out the MAH. Then all the way around towards the very back, there's the atmospheric thrusters just to help you out on a planet. A couple more hydrogen thrusters help on our left and right. Then at the very back here, we've got two large hydrogen thrusters to help us out in addition to the two on the side. In the middle, we can see a jump jump, so we are jump capable. Anyway, moving all the way up and above, we've got some lovely spikes in our orange and white. Looking down, we can clearly see our atmospheric thrusters on the side. A couple parachute hatches, just in case you get into an emergency. Then right in the middle is a connector for another ship to come and dock up to, or even just to use a base to refuel this thing up with hydrogen. Go all the way along the main body, that is what we get. So that's our bridge at the front there with a bunch of seats on the side, a main chair in the middle and a gravity generator. Then looking down on our side section, there's our O2H2 generators, our large hydrogen tank, some blaster edge blocks just to take the sides of the O2H2 generators, and there's the orange of our hydrogen thrusters. If we were to come all around towards the very front, that's how that's been set up. And then dropping down and coming underneath, this is what we get. So all the way around like that, that's our ore detector. Past our little ramp of how we're going to get in and out of this ship, there's another landing gear, some more hydrogen thrusters, the bottom of our hydrogen tanks, We've got two refineries on here, and there's the bottom of our atmospheric thrusters. And there we go. That's a very brief look around the outside of the hyperdriver, and looks fantastic how it's all been set up. Now what I can do is just grab hold of my character, come all the way over to this ramp, and we'll have a quick look on the inside. Hopping up to here, we now easily walk up to this doorway, over the top of this hinge, and get over to this door. Opening up the door, we've got a double door for an airlock. Now we can just close up behind us. And then we've got a lovely button panel, which is how we're going to raise and lower the ramp at the front there. So just clicking that. There we go, we can now open up this door once again. And up comes the ramp. So let that go and close all the way up. Hopefully the door doesn't try and kill me. And so there we go. That's just how it sits. Anyway, coming back through here, opening up this doorway. This is what we got on the inside. We've got a lovely green glow. And we can see a couple reactors give this thing some power. Looking around the room, there's a time block for the doors. On the opposite side, another time block. Then looking up, we can see some grates of our catwalks, our stairs, and then there's a couple of cryopods on the side. Walking all the way along over to here, there's an air vent to make sure you don't suffocate, a medical bay to respawn on and to recharge yourself. There's access to our refinery that sticks out the bottom. Looking all the way up, there's an assembler. Then we've got a lovely ladder to climb all the way up and hopefully get over to this section right here. There we go. 
We have a large cargo container at the back there to store a few bits and bobs inside, which it does come pre-ready with some materials inside it, such as reactor components, which would be very useful. And looking all the way around at the back here, a bunch of cryopods, there's some transcripts along the side there, there were a lovely neon light, which is taking us towards the front of the ship. So all the way up to here, this is our lovely bridge, where we can see some stairs going up to the main cockpit, some control seats on the side, with some lovely text on there, the text doesn't actually do anything, it's just for decorative purposes. Yes, that's a view we get all the way around. And then just looking back, there we go. So walking all the way around this room, this is what we get. We've got an interior wall with some neon tubes around the side of it. There's our gravity generator. And there's our ore detector we saw at the very front. Anyway, getting into the seat and in first person view, waiting for it to load. There we go. That's all we get. It's no script. It's just text on there to make it look all fancy. So we're going to hop out of there, come into this seat. Again, nothing going on with it. Some more fancy text. Should we just go and walk all the way around, come up these steps, and get into this seat. So in first person view, this is what we get from our main cockpit all the way around. So we've got a fantastic view at our sides, our fronts up, and we can see what our people are doing on the chairs just below us. Coming into third person view and bring up the HUD, these are the controls that we get. So number one is going to be to turn on our hydrogen thrusters all the way around the ship. Number two and three is our thruster override. Number four is for our hydrogen tanks to stop power on and off. Number six is for our atmospheric thrusters to turn them on. And it will just take off for the moment, so we'll just raise ourselves all the way up like so. I'm going to turn off the atmospheric thrusters, and as you can see, we will come down to the ground quite slowly. So we need to have that turned on while on the planet. So putting that back on, number 6 is for our connectors to lock and unlock it. Number 7 is for our batteries to auto or recharge. Number 8 is for our landing legs to lock and unlock them. Number 9 is then for our ramp at the front to open and close it. Just turning off the thrusters for the moment to get rid of all the smoke. Pressing number 9, that will now open up. Pressing it again, that will now close up. Coming over to tab number two, we then got our hydrogen thrusters on and off, and this is going to be for the ones underneath the ship. Putting the hydrogen thrusters back on, taking off a good distance, here we go. And then putting the camera underneath it, back to tab number two, pressing number one, that's going to turn off our atmospheric thrusters at the bottom. Pressing number two, that's going to be for our hydrogen thrusters at the bottom. Number three is manual toggle for our parachutes to open and close them. Number four for our gravity generator on and off. Then on tab number three, we then got controls for our jump drives. Oh, we're going to have to just scoot ourselves into space. There we go. Then just finding our jump drives in the control panel. Here we are. So we've got two of them on this ship. If we can get our distance all the way up. Press number three. We can jump 4,000 kilometers. Let's go and do that right now. As for tab number four, five, and six, we've got nothing else. So it's time to fly this thing around in space. There we go. So moving forwards, this is what we get because on fantastic speed, thanks to those four large hydrogen thrusters at the back. Coming to a stop, we are a little bit slower. We don't really have the gyroscope controls to do a 180 in time. So as you can see there, we are going to stop before we do a full 180. Got plenty of stopping time, so you don't need to really plan ahead when charging towards the station. Moving left and moving right. Again, some fantastic speed with that. Moving down, a lot slower than everything else. Moving up, a bit faster than moving down, but nowhere near as moving forwards and backwards or left and right. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the hyperdriver has to offer. It looks fantastic with how it's all been set up. If you wanted to, you could strap a bunch of railguns onto this, or a bunch of artillery, some autocannons, whatever you wanted to make it a combat ship, but that's entirely up to you. So to finish off this video, all I can think of doing is to slam this into an asteroid, and that'll be that. And here we go, we're now approaching the asteroid at full speed. What kind of damage are we going to get? And there we go, that was a fantastic crash. It just crumbled into itself, looking all the way up. I'm not actually sure what has happened, but the gravity generator has been destroyed. Bunch of floating panels, but we still have a semi-usable ship. We've got our cargo container and tank, our assembler, our refinery, and a lovely open area on the side. Where, well, we could build a base in an asteroid. All the way away, that is what that looks like. That's just been absorbed by the asteroid. But anyway, that is it for the hyperdriver. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself, as well as a link to the skybox I'm currently using. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.